Hey guys, I wanted to make a video real quick to uh, tell you a little bit about the electrical uh, service that uh, we're putting in here at the house. Uh, codes are going to vary from one area to another, so a lot of the stuff that's in this may not pertain to you. Uh, for some of you, although, however, it could be very helpful. Um, the electrical service here in my area, here in Kentucky, uh, we have to have two inspections at least. We have to have what is known as the rough end inspection and then of course the final inspection. Also here in Kentucky, the homeowner is allowed to wire their own house. Some places, uh, even there may be some even within Kentucky that do not allow that, but there are some places where you must use a qualified electrician. However, here, the big advantage is I can wire my own house myself with no problem. You know, I just have to go through the inspections. Uh, you've probably seen the video that I did on wiring a temporary service pole. I will link that up here. If you have not, you might want to check that out. And we have recently finished all of the wiring in the house for the rough end. And actually, I've done a little bit more than is required for the rough end, but it had to be done anyway, so I went ahead and had it in there for the inspector. We have passed our rough end inspection, and I wanted to give you a few things that, uh, that we needed to do, kind of help you along if you are doing any kind of electrical work yourself. Now, you can see I have the meter base mounted. Of course, this is going to be an overhead service. Here I have my weather head and you can see just to the left of the weather head is my eye bolt that is going to be carrying the load. When they pull that cable from the pole that needs to be something that is very stable and will to secure that cable to your house. So that's what that eye bolt does. There's actually a backer plate behind the wall that holds that in place. Here we can see the ground rod or the ground wire going down to the ground rods. Now they are currently buried. I just finished doing a little bit of dirt work out here yesterday. There's two ground rods. The first one is approximately a foot away from where the wire goes into the ground. The second one is six foot from that one. So it's going to be over in this area here. And of course you can see the conduit is going all the way down into the dirt. It has to be a minimum of one foot underground. That is the code requirement for this area. Now one thing that I have not done yet that I've got to get done before the final inspection. This is something that the inspector wanted me to do. And guys, I am not a professional electrician by trade. I don't do this stuff for a living. You know, I deal with uh, motor control, that sort of thing, uh, full time. And, you know, so I do work with electricity, just, you know, I don't really do any uh, house wiring as a professional trade. This is my own house, so that's, that's what we're doing. And one of the things he wanted me to do is I do have to add a ground strip here for other services, such as the phone line and that sort of thing, to be tied in to this ground. That's something I've got to get done before the final. One thing that I did do that I had to come back and change was that I had a green shielded wire running from here into the panel box in the house. That was something that I thought I needed to do. However, when the inspector came out, he told me to, that I needed to remove that, that. That's something that is not done currently, according to code. So I pulled that cable out. One of those things, you know, again, not a professional electrician, but that was one of those things. The inspector was very helpful, and he helped get me where I needed to be on that. So I got that removed, and, you know, didn't have any trouble there. And one thing that I am using on my service copper you can use aluminum in some places but i would rather use copper it's a little, little more expensive but in my opinion it's a little bit better so what we're going to do now is we're going to go inside and i'm going to show you some of the work that was done inside the panel and give you a little bit better understanding there as well all right guys here we are inside you can see my panel box behind me I wanted to show you a few things about this that I needed to do. Of course, in this area, we have to use the arc fault breakers on all 110 circuits. 
And since we also have to have the GFI breaker on certain circuits and can, you know, with the cost difference on these, the majority of my breakers are going to be the GFI combination breakers. That is something that, uh, you know, on a lot of circuits, it's required by code, of course, to have the arc faults, but the price difference is negligible. So I went ahead and purchased mostly the, uh, the GFI combination breakers. These here are just the arc fault. I got these with my panel that I've got. Uh, this is one of the larger panels and I wanted to make sure that I had plenty of room here. You can see that I have my main feed coming in. Again, this is all copper wire. Uh, I just had to identify with the neutral, of course, for obvious reasons. And you can get some cable, copper cable, that is already in the three strand bundle that has each of the strands uh, identified and this panel came with these lug covers I kind of like those you know a little something extra that kind of help keep people safe one thing that a lot of people forget to do is to put in their bond screw that has gotten a lot of people before on their inspections is they have not put in their ground bonding screw what this does is actually bonds the case of the panel to uh, your neutral you know this is this and then again it is bonded to ground uh, once it gets out into you know, the ground rods that sort of thing uh, looking at the meter base outside you can see that the neutral is connected to the ground rods out in the meter base this is where you can see that the neutral and the ground are tied together. You can see that bar off to just to the right over here where my finger is. That is where the ground rods are tied through this bare ground cable. And then of course that is also attached to the neutral conductor. Over here we do have our grounding strips. You can see it behind the wire there. All of the copper grounds are landed on that one. And I also have one on this side. Now one thing about this type of a breaker is that I used the plug-on neutrals that simplifies a lot of your wiring instead of having to have that pigtail that you got to tie around to the neutral bar. You can simply land your neutral on the breaker itself. I'll try to give you a shot there. And that simplifies your wiring quite a bit. And the neutral, basically, your breaker just clips onto the neutral bar just as it does on your uh, hot side as well. Now, a couple of the things that I had to do that I've got to change on this is I actually have two breakers that are too large. I've got two circuits that have 14.3 cable. Uh, my smoke detector, smoke detector circuit, which is a requirement here uh, you've got to have a smoke detector in every bedroom you've got to have one on every level uh, so depending on how your house is laid out you know that's something that you have to do here in this area and they all have to be interconnected to where if one goes off the rest of them will sound so having this one breaker i have it on there but the connection between all of them is 14.3 for a any circuit that has a 14.3 wire in it 14.3 wire or 14 gauge wire for that matter you need a 15 amp instead of a 20 amp so i've got to replace two breakers i've got a three-way switch that also has 14.3 uh, in that circuit so i've got to change that breaker out also no big deal though i mean that's something that uh, i didn't have to have finished at this point in the inspection but i'm glad i did that way the inspector seen it and he told me what i needed to change prior to getting the final inspection that way we can get everything going uh, and uh, have it have it set up for him when he comes back for the final inspection also mounting of your panel you cannot put a panel inside a closet or anything like that look at your floor plan if you're going to be doing it yourself that's something you need to be aware of you cannot put it inside a closet uh, if you do your inspector is not going to pass you and so that's just a few of the things that you may want to know now one of the things that i did in wiring this house is i basically put a room per circuit some people like to have lights and receptacles separate 
you know, how often do you really do any kind of electrical work in your house or having to go back in and do any kind of major repair on your electrical system? It's not real often that you do. So, you know, and the inspector was happy with it. He actually traced out a few of the circuits and asked me if I had basically one circuit per breaker, or one room per breaker. Told him, yeah, he seemed to kind of like that. So that was one of the things that I did. And the way that I've done that, coming from my panel box, for example, uh, we'll just look right here. Dropping down out of my panel box, I drop, came over to my first plug in this room, and then I just went around the wall. I followed the plugs all the way around, and then when I got to my last plug, I came up to the light switch. From the light switch, we go to where the light fixture is going to be. So, and that's basically how I did uh, all of the rooms in my house, or most of the rooms. Now one of the things that uh, you have to have also is in your kitchen you have to have a circuit, appliance circuit is what they're called. Uh, you have to have at least one, maybe two, depends on the counter space that you have. I've got two in here just in case. The inspector said I only needed one but you know I had two, he was fine with that, no problem whatsoever. Anything that has a motor or anything like that, like your refrigerator, a uh, microwave or anything like that has to have its own separate circuit. Its own breaker, its own circuit, nothing else on that circuit. Yeah, dishwasher, same thing, same way. And we have here my dishwasher or my refrigerator circuit, then of course my appliance circuits. I also added a circuit for the range hood, so it's on its own individual circuit as well. And then the remaining circuits in the kitchen. I basically just tied together. There was no real problem with that, the way that I'm going to be using them. They are on GFI. Anything that is around water has to be on GFI. That's something that is very critical in this area. And the same with your bathrooms. And I have in the bathrooms, I've got two, one upstairs, one downstairs. The bathrooms need to be on their own circuit, GFI. And, you know, there's really not a lot of additional plugs that you generally put into a bathroom. Our bathrooms are not very large, so it's just a single plug. We've got a vanity light. The way that I did that, coming from the panel box into this wall box here, this 4x4 box. From this box, I am going to have a switch and a plug going up to a vanity light. I also have an overhead light that I put in here as well. So that's just some of the basics that, uh, you know, about wiring, a bathroom, that sort of thing. Now, you need to have lighting. You've got to have an exterior plug and an exterior light. Generally, you will want a light over every exterior door. You'll also want a couple of outside plugs. Uh, depending on your area, the codes for those, those have got to be... GFI. That was another reason why I went ahead and just bought all GFI breakers. I knew that I needed so many circuits that had to be GFI, so I just went ahead and bought the GFI breakers. Put those in. I don't have to worry about buying the GFI receptacles. Uh, you know, that's something that just a little bit of a time saver there, and and it seems it seems to work. It seems to work real well with uh, what we're doing here. And I've not had any problems with the with the inspection on that. And uh, you know, I actually spoke with the inspector prior to doing this. I told him what I was doing. He gave me some advice on some things that I needed to do. And then, of course, with the rough end inspection, I tried to follow what the man said. It was real helpful. And so far, we have done well. Anyways, guys, I wanted to share just a little bit with you to try to help you understand a little bit about what it is when wiring a house. Uh, I almost forgot to mention that the way that it is done here is you don't want to have more than eight devices on a circuit. You know, you don't want to have more than that. It's something that they frown on. I've got under, you know, in most cases, well under. There's a few circuits, I think just one or two circuits, that only has seven devices on it. And you can run up to eight, and it may have reduced the total number of circuits by one or two if I had done that. But I really didn't want to push it to the limit, so I just went ahead and tried to keep it under eight. That way things go a little smoother, uh, seem to work a little better, no major issues there. 
anyways guys just thought i would uh, share a few tips uh with you all i'd appreciate it if you like this video i'd appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up be sure to subscribe check out my other videos uh, thanks for watching if you got any questions drop those down in the comments below i'll try to answer what i can but again i'm not a professional uh, electrician wiring houses for a living this is my own house this is something that i've done i just thought that i would share this with you all to see if it helps any of you all out anyways guys thanks for watching and we'll see you next time